Hello everyone. In this video, we will go over how to find the roots of an equation using bracketing methods. So let's go over the basics. Uh, given any function f of x, uh, you would like to find the value of x for which the function outputs 0. Okay. Graphically, what this means is um, you would like to know where does the function intersect with the x-axis. Okay, so this in this particular example, your root is going to be 1. Okay, this is important in engineering because oftentimes you are required to solve equations. Um, even if you are trying to find a particular value, let's say f of x equal to y, you can easily rearrange it such that it becomes a root finding problem. Okay. In bracketing methods, you take an interval. So let's say you took point 0.1 and point 0.4 and you compute the values of the function at point 0.1 and point 0.4 and then you determine if there is a root within this interval or not. Okay, so if you happen to compute it, you'll find that both the values are below zero. So this is negative and this is negative. So you can comfortably say that there, ha there is no root between the this bracket. Okay, had you chosen a different bracket, let's say 0.8 and 1.1, you'd find that this value is negative while this value is positive. Okay, so you can again say that there is at least one root between these two values. Okay, because again, the shape doesn't matter, but to go from here to here, you have to cross the x-axis, regardless of the shape of the function. Okay, again, when you do bracketing methods or any of these numerical root finding, you are not aware of where the function is. Okay, you're only aware of the values that you compute at these brackets. So, the essence of bracketing method is to refine your search space or you want to get a smaller and smaller bracket okay so when you start this problem you compute it in two places so here it's negative and here it's positive and you know for sure there's a root in between here okay so the easiest thing to do is divide your search space and this is why we call it the bisection method you bisect your search space into two brackets or two intervals so this is like the midpoint here and then you compute the value over here. So this happens to be negative. Okay. So if it's negative, negative on the red space, which is the lower interval, then you can clearly see that there's no root within that space. Okay. The green space, you can see there is a root because one bracket, one end of the bracket is negative, the other is positive. Okay. So you can ignore this portion and then continue your search in this portion. Okay. That's what we'll do. We'll go to the second iteration. And you'll see you do you repeat the same exact procedure. You divide it into two space and then check which one ha contains the root. Okay, so if you zoom in here, you can see the red space again does not contain the root, and the green space over here contains the root. Okay. So then you refine your search by going into this uh, new bracket and divide it into two parts. Then you do it again. Okay. Now can you guess which space contains the root? That's correct. Instead of the green space, the green space does not contain any root. The red space now contains the root. Okay. So you then take this red space and divide it into two portions. And you continue this process until you get very close to the root. Okay. So if I enable the function again, you can see how close it is to the exact root. So the exact root is over here and we have reached very close just within seven iterations. Okay, so let's look at how to code this in Python. So first, let's define our function. So define f of x. And the equation that we use here is x to the power 10 minus 1. So let's do the same over here. Return x to the power 10 minus 1. And you can try computing it at 0, let's say. And 1.3. Yeah, so it works. Okay. So let's uh, look at the graphical method first. Um, so you would like to graph it. And you also need the NumPy package to generate the numbers. So let's generate uh, uh, the set of x values. Um, so you can use the lin space function to generate 100 
num uh, 100 points between 0 and 1.3 okay and then you can plot this f of x okay and you can also enable the grid so here you can graphically see where the function intersects with the x-axis. So this is your x-axis. And you can graphically approximate that your uh, root is at one point, uh, at one. Now, how do you teach the computer that the um, there is a root within a given bracket? Okay. So we already discussed this before, but let me remind you. So if you chose an interval and both value happens to be negative then there is no root in there if you chose two points and both values the the f of the function evaluated at that value is positive then again there is no root in there there is only a root if you chose two points and the signs happens to be different okay you can look at it from the mathematical point of view let's say you chose a bracket a and b and you computed f of a and you computed f of b if you multiply these two numbers together and they happen to be positive, that means um, either both of them are positive or both of them are negative, which means you do not have a root between A and B. Okay, But if you computed them and the result happens to be negative, okay, that means one of them is negative or the other. Okay, So which means that there is at least one root in that interval. Okay. So to define this in Python, you can write a function. Uh, you can say define contains root, given a function and the bracket a and b. Um, if f of a multiplied by f of b is less than is less than zero, then return true. Okay. So if it's less than zero, that means it contains the root. L f f of a is greater than zero then return false which means there is no root inside the given bracket so let's test this uh, let's say it contains root the function that we have and let's choose point 0.2 and point 0.4 so point 0.2 and point 0.4 if you run this it will give you false there is no root within this point 0.2 and point 0.4 how about point 0.8 and 1.2 so 0 0.8 and 1.2 it says true. So there is a root between 0.8 and 1.2. Okay. Again, you didn't have to write all this code. Uh, you could have just used uh, this condition also. It's the same. Uh, you just have to define your A value and B value. So A is 0 0.8 and B is 1.2. If you run this, it will give you true if um, it contains a root. And if this is 0 0.2, 0 0.4. It'll give you false if there's no root inside the inside the brackets okay so now let's try to code the bisection method so define bisection given the function now we'll call the lower estimate xl and the upper estimate xu the upper bound and we also would like to stop the procedure after a certain number of iterations okay maximum iteration Okay, so um, the first step is to create your sub intervals. So create sub intervals. Okay, so you in the bisection method, you would like to bisect your search space. Okay, so first you need to compute the midpoint, which is xl plus xu divided by 2. And now you end up with two intervals, xl, xr. That's the lower interval and xr comma xu, the upper interval. Okay. Okay. So the next step is to check the sub intervals. Check the sub intervals. Okay. So if f of xl multiplied by f of xr happens to be negative, then your new search space xl xu should be updated such that it is you're looking at the lower interval xl xr okay if this is confusing for you uh, let me explain this just sets the value of xl to be xl and the value of the upper bound xu to be xr so you're kind of now focusing on the this interval if this happens to be true okay you could also write this as just xu equal to xr that also works 
if this is not true so this is basically step 3 step 3 update update interval okay if this is not true then you can check the other uh, the other interval xr and xu xr multiplied by f of xu is less than 0 if that's the case then you just need to update your interval to be the upper interval xr and xu okay if this is also not true these two conditions will fail only if f of xr happens to be exactly 0 which means that you already found the root so you can return xr okay you found the root now let's put this in a loop so that you can iteratively get better and better results so we'll add a loop over here so for i in range and we'll set this to be the max iteration and you can then tab your uh, instructions so that it's inside the for loop if it's case sensitive and then don't forget you also need to return your final xr value after the loop finishes so put this outside the for loop by indenting it back at the same level as the for loop okay so now let's test our code uh, with the function that we have by section f and let's give it the same interval on 1.3 and let's say do this uh, five times okay and here you can see it's approaching the true value within five iterations itself if you would like to see the progress you can just print out the xr value as it computes the iterations and let's say you want to do this 15 times and you can see how we start off and then how we start approaching the true value as we progress okay. this is the bisection method if you would like to do the false position method all you have to do is come back and update your xr value uh, graphically what i'll show you what the the false position does so false position so the false position basically instead of bisecting your uh, interval it takes the line and then kind of assumes that this is the new root although the actual root is over here it assumes that the root is here and then it bisects it from or it, it divides the sub interval at this point okay so this would be your second iteration okay now you have to be careful sometimes the bisection method is better sometimes the false position method is better in this particular case you can see the false position method is not good okay it's going to take a while to reach your true solution however the bisection has approached your solution quite quickly but if you have different functions the bisection could take a while and the false position can reach there much faster okay so you'll have to understand the advantages and disadvantages of these uh, methods before you implement it i hope this was clear thank you